Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to The Good Old Gamer. So we've got quite a bit of news coming out this week, particularly from Intel. Intel is now taking the lid off their Intel ARC GPUs that we've all been waiting to hear about. So we now have a lot more information. We're definitely going to be talking about all of that here today in this video. And the other big story is Sapphire is reducing their RDNA 2 mining GPUs by 40% over the past month. This lets us know that GPU mining is finally slowing down. When the AIBs are lowering prices, you know something's going on. So we're gonna be talking about all that here today. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So kicking things off, we have the Intel Core i9-12900KS with its 5.5 gigahertz clocks going on pre-order. So this isn't that big of a deal. I think we've actually spoken about this before, but they're coming up and they're not cheap guys, coming in at about $800 for pre-order. So these are pre-binned 12900Ks. If you went with something like Overclockers or any of these other companies that pre-bin the golden samples, they charge an extreme premium for those as well. Intel's now just taking it into their own hands and charging you that extra money now. So to me, this isn't that big of a deal because this is not a CPU for most people out there. I just wanted to bring it up that they aren't playing around with their golden samples. They're charging a fortune. So if you were waiting for one of these and you thought it was going to be priced, well, competitive to the current 12900K, that's not going to happen. So if you're eyeballing one of those, you can get those for around $600. I would personally go that route myself. All right, more Intel news. Actually, most of the news this week is Intel-based. But anyways, Intel enables a fifth display uh, support for DG2 GPUs, possibly for Arc Alchemist workstation GPUs. So this came up earlier in the week, and Paul and I talked about this on the Technomics podcast. If you haven't checked that out or you want to join us, you can go ahead and click the link in the description below. We chat about this stuff every single week. But anyways, we kind of figured that this is the route that they were going. And honestly, with how little we've heard about Alchemist thus far, and considering it was supposed to launch in Q1, we assume that perhaps Intel was shifting and making these only data center cards. However, that is not the case. We got information, I think it was literally the day after our Wednesday podcast, Intel confirms ARC AIC cards, or add-in cards, I believe that's what AIC stands for, are coming in the second quarter, and Project Endgame streaming service announced. So I'm not too familiar with the Project Endgame streaming service, but I can kind of give you guys a few thoughts as to why they would call it that. But regardless, second quarter is now when we're going to be seeing GPUs. So if we come on down here, we can see that you have uh, Endgame. This is its infrastructure layer. I'm guessing this is just going to be some sort of cloud computing service, so streaming service. But that's not what we're interested in. What we're interested in is the actual discrete graphics cards that will be coming. Intel confirms they will be second quarter. So that is April to June. So sometime between then, this will come out. Video cards as well kind of theorizes that in-game is something like GeForce Now. That makes sense. All these guys think that that's the future and they're going to invest heavily in there. Now, this particular article, I think, is better uh, showing us what we want to know about discrete graphics cards. Well, first off, Intel Arc Celestial, so that should be coming out in 2024. Uh, this GPU is to target the ultra enthusiast GPU market. So pulling up their slide here, we can kind of see what Intel is thinking, like where their brain is at with this. So we can see that the lower mainstream segment and entry level segment, they believe that APUs or the integrated graphics, that's going to satiate that with Alder Lake and Raptor Lake. And then we have Alchemist basically at the upper end of mainstream and hitting into the performance tier. So these aren't exact specs. We don't know exactly what that entails, but we kind of figure maybe, you know, RTX 3060 level, 3060 Ti level, that's kind of the high end target and basically anything that's faster than their iGPU on the lower end. Now, things get more interesting when we take a look at Arc Battle Mage. Now, this is hitting into the enthusiast sector. So that means Intel believes they're going to be more competitive with AMD and NVIDIA's higher end graphics cards. That's probably like your 3070 range, 3080 range, perhaps not the TI range. Um, so the sub $1,000 market, I would say, at least the MSRP market, 
that's what Battle Mage will be going for. But what I find more interesting is the Meteor Lake and Next Gen uh, iGPU solution. So right down here, they're just like, yeah, it is what it is. You guys are familiar with that. But we have the Intel Arc Tile GPU. Now, this is something that Celso was talking about on his last video over on the Cortex channel. I do recommend you check that out because it's very clear that this is a shift. They're going to change up how they're doing their discrete graphics and even integrated graphics coming in 2022 through 2024 with Meteor Lake being the first one on the CPU side. But as you can see here, they believe that they will be covering the entire mainstream segment with iGPU and essentially bumping up right against the performance tier, which is very interesting. And then Battle Mage will actually just be super high-end graphics cards. So that means the Alchemist cards will also likely slot in at a lower price point. So they'll keep Alchemist and have Battle Mage produced at the same time, which makes a lot of sense. And if you don't want to go that route, you could also get an iGPU. So I'm super interested in that. And then we can see here with Celestial, then they're talking about the Ultra Enthusiast segment, which notice they, they recognize that this is a very small portion of the market, but these are the people spending $1,200, $1,500, $2,000. ,000. This is when Intel believes that they'll be competing at the mega high end. So I believe that this is the most important slide that they presented for their graphics structure. And finally, the most interesting news outside of Intel stuff, Sapphire G Pro X080 RDNA2 crypto mining card gets a gets 40% cheaper in just one month. So this right here is kind of an interesting card. They go over how we even found out that it was a thing. I did a video on it a while ago. Essentially, it's a Navi 22 die, except it's cut down to 36 uh, CUs. So it's kind of interesting there. It has weird 10 gigabytes of RAM. It's basically what a 6700 non-XT probably would have been. So these are the defective Navi 22 dies. But here's the big thing here, guys. So the price on these, we're going for about 1,200 euro up until about a month ago, and then wham, now they're down to 750 euro. As the article explains, this is the MSRP for this card. It was always supposed to be 750 euro, but it was selling for significantly more. Now, what this indicates to me is miners are not buying RDNA 2 cards any longer for mining, which means Ampere is probably the only way that these guys are gonna go, and it means they're becoming price conscious of these things. So overall, this is definitely a good sign. Hopefully we see this continue. And on that note, let's check out crypto and see where it is today. All right, so taking a look at Ethereum. So it has not been having a good day. We're down 3.3%. If we go back to the five day, it's down 2.65%. And if we do the one month, it's down 11%. So it's definitely doing the head and shoulders, as Paul calls it. You got your shoulder, and then you got your head, and now it's starting to go down. Uh, looks a little bit better on the six-month chart here. And it looks like we're just getting back to where we were not too long ago. And then that's really going to be the make or break point, I think. If crypto goes below 2,000 USD and stays there and then trades between, let's say, 1,500 and 2,000 for a couple of weeks, then we know that the current GPU mining boom will eventually or very soon be over. So looks pretty good here, but who knows? Anything can happen uh, with the way that the world works and the way that the Federal Reserve likes to print money. They could say something stupid and this thing could go to the moon. See, that's the thing. It can go both ways. And uh, but hopefully we are headed in the right direction. All right. So real quick, I want to touch on some of the uh, Intel news that we got out there. Obviously, uh, my co-host on the Technomics podcast, which is Paul from the Not an Apple Fan YouTube channel, he got some insider information. He's actually knows a guy who has one of these DG2 cards and has tested it, and things just aren't looking that great right now. However, Intel's pretty confident that in the next three months or so, they should be able to get this ironed out to a certain point to where they can start selling them. So... Now they could always push that back, but I believe that they set this up to where they're like, look guys, we have a deadline and we have to get it there. So this is obviously going to be a big deal for them. I'm very interested, not so much for Alchemist. Alchemist to me is and always has been the beta test. They just want to get it out there, see where the drivers are. And yeah, everybody who buys one needs to know that they're not going to get the best experience ever maybe in time, but they're definitely going to be shifting with Battle Mage. You can see it with their iGPUs taking a turn. They're going to the tile-based uh, GPU, which I think is basically just a chiplet, 
But Celso from Cortex, as I mentioned before, he also did a video where he believes they're going to be doing tile-based rendering. So that's going to be a big deal with Battle Mage. So I'm very interested for that as well. And then I think the integrated graphics getting a massive performance bump to where Intel believes it will be covering the entire mainstream segment is a good sign. I know a lot of you guys out there keep asking me, it's like, man, what if AMD made this APU or that, that APU and all these basically gaming APUs, something like they're using in the Steam Deck, AMD has zero interest in selling you that. They've had so much time that they could have made a dedicated gaming APU, low core count, super high clock speeds with a big GPU and quad channel memory or something like that. They could have done this years and years and years ago but they chose not to. Looks like Intel is going to be the first company to really come out with a APU, CPU with IGP, whatever you want to call it. They call it an XPU. I don't like that. That's never going to fly. Not for me anyway. It just doesn't roll off the tongue. But regardless, if they can satiate that market, so that would be like, let's say 6500 XT up to RTX 3050, somewhere in that range of performance with integrated graphics, I believe that that would be plenty. And a lot of people will really like that. And it will really highlight the missed opportunity that AMD had. So I'm most interested in that personally. And I want to see what the tile-based rendering sort of stuff uh, and see how that shakes out. Alchemist to me, like I said, I'll probably pick one up to play with it but it's just not the one that I'm personally super excited for. I believe next year, this time next year, will really be the big time to get excited for Intel. But I'm glad to see that they're going to try to get these out into customers' hands and actually make the product. They did say that they're gonna be releasing 4 million units. That's a drop in the bucket for what the market needs right now. However, if crypto does slow down, as I showed you, it, it is right now. We're seeing that you know AMD's not, or, Sapphire, rather, is no longer really selling overpriced mining cards for RDNA 2. It will take longer for NVIDIA cards to fall down and get into that price bracket, but we are seeing the decline. We're on the decline right now. Things are getting cheaper, so hopefully that continues to go. Then the 4 million cards from Intel would make a lot of sense as they're not going to be gobbled up by Ethereum miners. They'll be out there for us to buy, so that may be plenty of supply. Who knows? We will have to wait and see on that front, but like I said, I'm most interested in the integrated graphics. That's going to be key and could be very disruptive in the market if AMD and uh, NVIDIA, basically their bottom end lineup just doesn't matter anymore because Intel offers you know, a great CPU plus that integrated graphics as well. So I think that that's going to be a game changer. AMD is going to feel real stupid for not doing this a while ago, which is great. That's what we want. We want the competition. If somebody misses an opportunity, your competitor does that. And then you go, crap, we should have done that. And then you learn from your mistakes. Then we get more competition, lower prices, better performance. So that's what I'm hoping for. I'm very optimistic about all of this because more competition is better. The main issue that we've been having here is a lack of competition. Everything's been related to a lack of competition. So more competition is better in my book. Well, already guys, before we wrap this up, I do want to go over the good old game of the day, but it's not an old game. So I guess it's just a good game of the day. So the good game of the day is Terminator Resistance. Obviously, this isn't that old. It just came out, but I just finished it up here recently and I had a great experience with it. This is the type of game that I wish we got more of. This isn't a AAA game. It's not quite an indie game. It is kind of uh, somewhere in between. I guess you could call it double A game. And it's not quite as polished, like I said, as a big AAA title, but it's polished enough to where I was perfectly happy with it. Now, the game plays a lot like a Fallout game set in that futuristic Terminator universe. So if you like Fallout 3 and you like Terminator, this is definitely going to be a game that you're going to enjoy. Now, the shooting is better than Fallout 3, and then, of course, the scope and RPG elements are much lighter than something like the Fallout games. But still, to me, that is the perfect example of how to describe this game as a Fallout light, game in the Terminator universe. I really enjoyed it. There were some terrifying moments. Uh, remind me of nightmares as a kid being chased around by Terminators. And they did a really great job with this. So if you haven't played it before, I'd recommend checking it out hands down. Well, alrighty guys, to wrap this up, I want to hear your thoughts down in the comment section down below. Are you interested in all this new stuff that Intel is going to be bringing, their new gaming-ish focused, I guess you could say visuals. They didn't say gaming per se, uh, but their visual focused 
way forward, going with really powerful iGPUs coming next year, and even with something like uh, Celestial going after the mega high end, the best of the best by 2024. I want to hear your thoughts on that. And I also want to hear your thoughts on mining seemingly going back down. Do you think it's going to continue the trend? Do you think it's going to pop back up? Personally, we're seeing uh, lower highs and lower lows if you look over the past few months. So I personally think that we're going down, but I want to hear your thoughts on that. So yeah, that's really all I have. Hope you guys have a great weekend and I will catch you guys in the next video.